Hi, this is Tim with rcnoob.com. Today we're going to get up close and personal with the Red Cat Racing Gen 8. Now the Gen 8 is the latest model from Red Cat Racing and it's really becoming a popular machine in the scale RC scene. Um, you have a number of options to choose from in that area. You have you know, the SCX-10 from Axial, you have the Gen 7 from Red Cat Racing, the previous model for this. You have vehicles from Charisma RC. You have vehicles from HPI, from Traxxas, the TRX-4. Uh, so this is you know, the newest model, one of the newest models, to hit that arena. And from my standpoint, it's a, it's a very impressive machine. So why don't we take a closer look at some of the interesting aspects of this vehicle. First off, the controller. It's, well, the controller really isn't that interesting. If you are familiar with other Red Cat Racing models, you will have seen this controller before. Uh, two channel, 2.4 gigahertz, basic adjustments, uh, steering trim, throttle trim, and servo range. Outside of that, it's a comfortable controller. Feels good when you're holding it. Um, nice rubberized grip. And really, that's about it. But it does the job. That's the important thing. And if you have a controller that you prefer, you can easily swap that out along with the receiver and uh, customize it however you wish. So let's get that out of the way. The Red Cat Racing Gen 8 features a, an International Scout Rally body. And I have always been a fan of the International Scout for a variety of reasons. It's, just, it's an interesting, unique-looking vehicle give you a couple different views of the body as it sits on this. It is a big body. It's a big vehicle when you compare it to other models. Even the Gen 7. I thought the Gen 7 was kind of a, a big beefy monster when compared to other models in my lineup. You put this next to it and it, it, it dwarfs it in some areas. But it's really just the body. The body is very big, very large, very massive. When you pull the body off and compare the chassis to other 10th scale chassis, it falls in line you know, quite easily. Wheelbase matches up with that of the TRX4 Sport, um, the Gen 7, the SCX10. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of an optical illusion, specifically from the body. There are a number of scale details that have been included in this body. You see the side view mirrors over here, a nice molded grill. That's actually a bolt on piece. And as with Red Cat Racing's Gen 7, they've been releasing 3D printed files or 3D printing files. So you can print other grill styles that had come with the Scout and simply swap it out. It's, it's an interesting idea, interesting concept. I have yet to do that. I'm sticking with stock for right now, but uh, the fact that you can easily swap these out or, or for the most part easily swap these out is an appealing aspect to this model. But out of the box stock, I you know I like this attention to detail. Other details up front, you see you know, bumper looks fairly close to what the Gen 7 had, um, and it's got some little toe shackles, little fender flare action going on on the sides here. Spin around, take a look at the back. You have some back taillight lenses here. Again, you can put three lights in the back uh, for each taillight, and then you can also put some LED lights in the bumpers as well. You can do that on the front. Uh, back of the vehicle, tow shackles. Really cool little uh, scale feature. Uh, they put a uh, tow hitch and a little tow hitch cover. In the back, you see decals all over the back. Scout 2 International um, for a, a, an international fan or scout fan such as myself. It's a fun little feature to see. Um, spinning around, get another look at some of those side details. Again, the side view mirrors. You get a better view of these uh, fender flares a little bit. Now, this fender flare does not line or does not follow the lines of the body. Uh, not really sure why. Other folks have pointed this out too, and, and hopefully it's not because they could just slap their logo on there. Um, but really... You know, if you followed the, the cutout of the wheel well, it should kind of go just above that cat's head. But for whatever reason, they made this a little bit beefier, beefier than maybe it needed to be. Um, 
it doesn't bother me too much, but it's just something that other folks have pointed out. And before we get to the inner workings of the vehicle, we'll take a real quick look at the tires and the wheels. Um, much like the Gen 7, it features the same Interco Super Swamper licensed tires. Um, I have really never seen a stock tire that performed as well as those did. Um, so it's the same tire pattern, same tread pattern on the Gen 8 as what you'd find on the Gen 7. However, the tires aren't the same. The wheels are not the same. Um, the foams, actually, on this model are more of a memory foam. So they are slow to regain their form after compression. And this is an interesting choice, I'll, I'll say that. I still have to get this outside and do, even give it a solid shakedown and a solid test. But you can feel they're a lot firmer. But then when they compress, you have a bit of a flat spot in the tire. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect driving. From what I've seen, it doesn't affect it too bad, but uh, I do have plans to, as, for as much as I like these tires, I do have plans to swap them out with a different set um, down the road. So I am going to give them a, a fair shakedown before I do that. The wheels uh, have a really cool old school retro look to them, chrome, plastic, um, and then they have an aluminum beadlock ring. These are actual beadlock wheels, so you could swap the tires out if you wanted and keep the, the wheels intact. Or you could just pull the whole thing off and put something else on if you so choose. Now you may have noticed this vehicle doesn't have any body posts sticking through the body, which I'm a fan of. I like the clean look. I like the body post less body clip this look that some vehicles offer. And this vehicle offers that uh, in a, a very nice way. So what's holding the body on to the chassis? Well, it's Velcro or as Red Cat Racing termed it, hook and loop uh, adhesion. You hear that satisfying rip sound. Uh, gotta be careful. Like I said, I did wire this up with lights. We'll just unplug that to get that out of the way. You see the underside of the body, and I'm, I'm gonna say one more thing about the body and then we'll move on to chassis. Um, the, the Gen 7 body, for my money, was very, very flimsy. And it was very surprising, actually, how flimsy that body was. This body feels a lot more uh, durable, just, you know, a, a lot more durable. It is quite flimsy down toward the bottom, but once you get to the, the more molded areas, it's uh, very rigid, very durable, should hold up very well on, on the trail. Now we have a nice clear look at the chassis of the Gen 8. You get quite a bit for... For your money, and I haven't even mentioned the price yet. Um, this vehicle retails for two ninety nine ninety nine. So for under three hundred dollars, you get again. I'm a little bit biased. You get a really nice looking body, and you get a really nice, well put together, well constructed uh, chassis. Now the chassis of the Gen Eight is really it, it borrows a lot from vehicles that you'll find on. Uh, on the market today. It has a little bit of SCX-10, has a little bit of TRX-4. It does have portal axles. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, you see the molded inner fenders. Um, really just a nice job filling this entire chassis out, making it seem very solid, and it is a very solid chassis. Uh, the Gen 7 was one that I said was incredibly solid. This vehicle, incredibly solid as well. Spin around your ESC mounted here, your receiver mounted back there, front mounted motor, battery mounted here with, with a fairly decent low center of gravity. Um, these rock sliders also double as um, body containment slides. So, you know, you, you tuck the side of the body in to reduce flare and flex, and hopefully it won't get caught on things as you're running over rocks and driving over the trail. The shocks uh, are oil-filled, aluminum-bodied, and fairly impressive. They have, they, you know, they're very nice, very fluid. There's not really any catch to the springs, although the springs feel very, very soft. 
I will note that I do have plans to replace these in the future too. But I want to, again, I'll give everything a solid stock shakedown before we start pulling parts and pieces off. Um, once you move to the back of the vehicle, you'll see there really isn't a lot going on under those fenders as opposed to the front. But again, that's fine. You don't need that. You have a lot of weight up front. The weight of this vehicle, I feel, is, is just impressive for a stock out-of-the-box machine. I've done a little bit of indoor crawling due to weather. Um, haven't been able to get this outside for a true solid outdoor test yet. But from what I've seen, I've been very impressed. Um, I feel like the weight distribution, the overall weight of the vehicle, it's just it's you know, very impressive. Another quick note, this model does not come with a battery. You'll have to supply your own battery with a Dean's or uh, Star plug. See the uh, Hexfly ESC with its Dean's connector. But that's really you know, a look at the chassis from the top view. We'll take a look at those portal axles that I was talking about in just a moment. Um, aluminum linkage all the way around. Plastic drive shafts underneath. We'll get to those in just a second, too. Give you a closer look. Um, just, again, an, an impressive vehicle. Very well thought out. Very well put together. Here's a look underneath the chassis. Again, aluminum linkage. Aluminum diff covers on the front and back. Here's those portal axles. Give you a better view in just a moment. But uh, they do offer quite a bit of ground clearance. This vehicle does come with a metal servo horn stock. Um, really nothing to talk about from the design standpoint it's very basic but it, it's nice to see that little bit included in a ready to run rig um again just well put together these the the frame rails are incredibly beefy and incredibly just uh just impressive for what you get and especially when you compare it to other models such as the sex 10 and the gen 7 but uh very solid machine like i said um very solid very well thought out, and uh, from my experience so far, very fun to drive. All right, here's a little bit better shot of those portal axles. You see right there, nice little bit of rays, ball bearings really throughout the vehicle. So it should roll very smoothly, it does roll very smoothly. Um, like I said, from indoor performance, it's it's been a very impressive machine, and it's been my... Um, really the vehicle I've reached for the most when I wanted to just let loose and unwind for a little bit um, indoors. This vehicle, for my money, is becoming one of my favorites just because of how it, it performs, how it handles, how it looks. Um, and the fact that it's under $300, technically, um, it, it, for me... It says a lot, and I think that the amount of detail and the amount of work that the folks at Red Cat Racing have put into this, uh, I'm really excited to see what future vehicles they come up with. Now, I, I'm, I'm blown away by this, but I really am excited to see what else they come up with. Um, if this is going to be their, their vision and their level of detail going forward. So, there you have it. This is the Gen 8 from Red Cat Racing. Again, $299.99. Not a bad price for a ready-to-run vehicle. If you are interested in just the chassis and want to buy your own wheels, tires, electronics, motor, etc., they do offer a pre-assembled chassis kit called the Pack, um, which, when announced, was going to retail for $199, and they dropped the price to $169, so you can get it for... Uh, even better price now, uh, but that's everything, you know, chassis that we just looked at, minus the wheels, body, and electronics. Uh, if you want to build your own vehicle on this platform, it's very easy to do that as well. For the price of this vehicle, you can do a lot with it too. Even if you're not a fan of the Scout or the Scout body as I am, you can easily pull that off, put something else on there, and you still have a solid platform underneath to um, to hit the trails with. I'm excited. I'm <laughs> I'm really excited. I cannot wait to get this vehicle um, just to get more drive time with it. Uh, get it outside, drive it around indoors more, um, make my modifications to it. Like I said, I've got plans for the wheels, plans for the shocks. Uh, I've already put the lights in, 
So we're going to have some fun with this machine going forward. For more information on this model, visit rcnoob.com. I've got a write-up, first impressions write-up on this. I'll be talking more about this on future videos and on the RC Noob podcast, so be sure to check that out as well. And for more information on other RC vehicles, news, reviews, what have you, visit rcnoob.com. As always, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for taking the time to uh, check it out. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and do that as well. Until next time, this is Tim with rcnoob.com. We'll talk with you later.